This is Junk Wars. It's the first game that I ever made, and I actually made the whole thing in only 10 days. I used AI for pretty much everything. The code, the 3D assets, the sound effects, even the crazy hour-long soundtrack. It won a top 5 spot in a game jam with over a thousand other games, but that wasn't even the best part. It all started when I saw a tweet by Peter Levels announcing a coding competition called Vibe Jam. Levels, known for his viral solo projects, had recently used AI to create a simple browser game called Fly, and he made a bunch of money, and now he was challenging others to do the same. The Vibe Jam rules were simple. Build a browser-based game in just one week with at least 80% of the code written by AI, also known as Vibe Coding. The game had to be instantly playable in a browser, have mobile support, and ideally include a multiplayer. Levels enlisted some heavy hitters to be the judges, such as Andre Karpathy, who actually coined the term Vibe Coding, and Mr. Doob, the creator of 3JS. There was also a $10,000 prize for the top game, so this was definitely a serious competition. Given that I use AI to code every day and even teach people how to do that on this channel, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to put my skills to the test and hopefully share some of the insights that I gained along the way. But here's a problem. I saw Levels post three days late, which meant I only had four days left to make a game, and I didn't even know what I wanted to make just yet. Fortunately, the following morning, it came to me. I always like the appeal of those prop hunt games where there's a team of players hiding as props and a team of hunters trying to find them, but I wanted to make something that could be easily played by just a few players, so I decided to make it into a deathmatch. Everyone would be hunting and hunted all at the same time. I decided that a junkyard would be the perfect setting for such a game. Players would naturally hide in the terrain and blend in, and most importantly, it was perfect for AI-generated assets. If some of the props looked weird or broken, that would be completely fine, it would just be part of the fun. The more I thought about it, the more I liked the idea. It felt like something I could realistically achieve in just a few days. Little did I know how difficult building a multiplayer game would actually be. Luckily for me, right after I decided on the game idea, Levels announced an extension of an additional week for the Vibe Jam. Now it was a no-brainer, I was going to make this game a reality. I decided to go all in and hit start on my first ever live stream. All right, so I guess here it is. I am live streaming for the first time. <laughs> this will be pretty interesting. All right. During the first day, I quickly made a lot of progress. It's really amazing what you can accomplish with these AI tools nowadays. The primary tool that I used was Cursor an AI-powered code editor that allows you to request code changes using plain English. Following the requirements within the document, please create a basic 3JS game that implements some of the core functionality here. Please keep it really minimal and start off with the player being just the cube that can move around and can fire when I do a left click. It uses AI models such as Claude Sonnet and Google's Gemini to write code and then it applies that code directly to your files. In addition to writing code, it can also be a great tutor to help you learn how to code and to understand new technologies and concepts. So despite not knowing anything about building games, I was able to just ask a few questions and quickly get started with 3JS. Let's refresh. Okay, so we're starting off, we don't have any ammo. Boom, I picked some up. One, two, hell yeah. Okay, this is working. Okay, I picked some ammo up. Boom, hell yeah, look at that. It explodes, like for real. Okay, here we go, this is pretty sick. To create the visual assets for the game, I used Claude to come up with some good junk items to include and write some mid-journey prompts to actually generate the images. Mid-journey is a text-to-image AI that allows you to quickly create artwork. And with Claude's help, I was able to come up with some effective prompts that generated consistent 2D images of junk. I sorted through it, picked out my favorites, removed the backgrounds using Photoshop, and my game was off to a strong start. But it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies. At one point, AI had written 3,000 lines of code, which I ended up throwing away and going back to the 300 lines that I had previously. Claude coding away. What is it doing? Also, I got stuck for about two hours trying to add a walkable ground to my map. 
That's the funny thing about AI. If you know what to ask for, it can make you really fast. But if you don't even have the vocabulary to properly word your prompt, then you're just going to end up getting stuck. So if you're thinking about building software with AI, I strongly encourage you to still learn software basics and how to code. Anyhow, the magic word was height map. And once I figured that out, I was able to quickly generate an awesome looking map. By the end of day one, I felt victorious. I had done my first ever live stream. I had a game with a 3D map and decent looking visuals. I even had some basic enemies that you could shoot and destroy. The game was nowhere near complete, but I was off to a solid start. The next day, I decided to stream again. This time, I was building a lot of the core features of the game, including respawning, aiming, spawn protection, transforming into various types of junk, and by the end of the day, I was able to actually deploy the initial single-player version of the game on JunkWars.net. I even got some initial feedback from my viewers about the controls, which I was able to incorporate into the game. And then, I got started on the multiplayer, and oh my god, I did not realize how difficult this was going to be. It turns out, you can't just build a single-player game and then tack on multiplayer afterwards. You have to architect it from the ground up around the central server that is going to manage the state of the game. I had started with a single player client and now I was going to have to re-architect everything from scratch. So check it out, when I shoot this shot, we have two different trajectories right now. Each of these spheres represents a message from the server that tells me about the latest position of that bullet. And as you see up here, you see this black line? That right there is the client side bullet. So look at the height difference between the black line and that sphere. We need it to be going through the spheres. What I expected to take me just half a day took one, then two, then three full days to complete. At one point, I got into a total tangle of AI-generated code and lost five hours of work because I didn't commit my working code and I messed up my files beyond repair. But I just kept going because I was making progress every day and I felt like I was one step closer to a fully functioning game. By day six, I had a working multiplayer game that ran on my local network. My kids helped me test the game and we had a total blast. They were really the best play testers that I could ever ask for. I could see the finish line, but I still had some major challenges ahead of me to get the game working on the internet. I was going to do another stream, but my power ended up going out, so I was forced to take a break. This is when another crazy idea came to me. What if I created a soundtrack for the game? I knew I could quickly make music using AI with Suno, but I hadn't realized how far they came since I last used it. The songs sounded incredible out of the box, and with their new editing tools, I was quickly able to change parts of the songs and get them to sound exactly the way that I wanted. I kept editing, clipping, fading, and remastering all night. The following day, I continued to rearrange and finalize the soundtrack, and in the end, it was epic. It was day seven and stream number six and time was ticking. There were only a few days left in the competition. I was excited to stream because I figured that we'd finally all get to play online together, but switching from the local server to something that was deployed publicly on the internet was also a bigger challenge than I expected. Looking at, you know, what are my options for actually deploying this? And I discovered Cloudflare Durable Objects. I think I'm going to have to keep troubleshooting this, unfortunately, offline. I ended up spending the entire stream and then the rest of the day on this issue. As a side note, I ended up leaving a bunch of servers up and running, and that ended up costing me 300 bucks. So definitely be careful with how you use these cloud services. It's super easy to run into a lot of charges, especially when you're using AI to code. Anyhow, by the next day, I had the whole thing working and I aired my last development live stream. We got the game live now. It is pretty awesome. This one was a total blast because the game was actually live and we all got to play it together. 
viewers actually joined and we played, and at one point we had as many as 8 people playing the game all at the same time. I was adding features live, quickly deploying changes, and this was really the moment that I had been waiting for. Dude, this is awesome. Wow, too bad it's crushing it. Jeez. But after the stream, I honestly felt kind of empty. I mean, it was really fun to play the game and get it to this point, but things didn't really go the way that I had expected. The game never really got that much attention, and every stream I did had fewer viewers than the last. For anyone that did join those streams, I want you to know that I deeply appreciate you being there and for supporting me. But at this point, I was just really exhausted. I had spent a full week building this game, averaging like 5 hours of sleep a night, and I just needed a break. So the following day, I did exactly that. I took the whole day off, no coding, just two days before the deadline. I spent some time with my family, took a long nap, walked around, it was definitely a good idea. Later that night, we had friends over to play some D&D, and I got to show them the game. They gave me some great feedback, including the fact that the 2D assets which kept facing the camera were pretty distracting, and if there was any way I could figure out a 3D version, that it would look much better. That's when I found a model called Trellis, and I was simply blown away. Using my 2D junk images, I could get legit 3D models. I mean, just look at this. But there was a catch. The models coming out of this thing were huge. I mean, 150,000 triangles for a rectangular AC unit. The performance was a nightmare, and the game would barely work at all. But the 3D models just looked so cool, I just had to make it work. I couldn't believe I had even managed to get it this far, so I just decided to keep going and quickly learned a lot about optimizing 3D models for performance. Suddenly, it was day 10 of development, the day before the competition was over. The game looked completely different with these 3D assets, but there were also a lot of issues with rendering, with synchronizing game state, and on top of that, I still had a bunch of features that I wanted to add, like the music player and sound effects, and some sort of power-up that would make the gameplay a little bit more exciting. I had no idea how I was going to get all of this done, but I just decided to start tackling it one by one. I discovered that Eleven Labs had amazing AI-generated sound effects that I could use, so I crafted a bunch of these for the games and made it sound perfect. I reworked the aiming and collision logic, I fixed the performance issues, and I just kept going all night. 2am turned to 3, to 4, to 5, and I just kept going. I was just running on adrenaline at this point. Day 10 just really became 10.5. I kept coding all morning, just hours before the competition closed. Eventually, I tested it with the kids, and the game worked. I mean, it really worked. I couldn't believe that I had finally gotten it to this point. Sure, there were still some bugs, but it really did run, and it was quite passable. At this point, I went on a walk hoping to feel refreshed, but after 30 hours of being awake, I just felt like a tumbleweed blowing in the wind. Yet, all I could think about was that there were still some bugs left in the code, so I went back home and started working on those. And with just a few hours left before the competition closed, I submitted the game. I got some food, watched some battle bots with my wife and kids, and finally, after 36 hours of no sleep, I got some rest. The following day was interesting. I eagerly awaited to see what would happen, and meanwhile I kept troubleshooting various issues that I would notice. I knew I couldn't add any more major features, but I felt that basic stability fixes were fair game. At one point, the game server actually crashed and wasn't working for a few hours. I got it restarted, but I was definitely worried. The next day, Levels tweeted that they had done an initial review and eliminated about 500 of the games because they did not pass some of their basic checks. I anxiously commented on that thread saying, God, I hope Junk Wars made the initial cut, and mentioned my outage. I didn't hear anything back until the next morning when I checked and found a comment that sent shivers down my spine. It was from one of the judges, S13K, and the comment simply said, did you check mobile? I was horrified. Had something gone wrong with mobile? I mean, I tested it on my Android and it worked fine. 
I even posted a video, but S13K posted another video on an iPhone and it was stuck. I felt like this was it. Game over. Two weeks of effort just shut down by a stupid cross-platform compatibility issue. But then something unexpected happened. S13K told me the exact error that he was seeing, and in just 10 minutes, I was able to quickly deploy a fix. Now here's where it gets kind of crazy. My fumble with the iPhone issue turned into my magic moment apparently, because S13K and I ended up chatting, and he took an interest into the game. Since he could actually open the game now, he went to check it out, and I was online, and the kids were of course ready to play as well, and so we played. and we ended up playing for a whole half an hour. He was super impressed with the game, and we had an awesome chat afterwards and discussed a lot of the technical details. Later in the day, he even invited one of his friends to play the game, and we ended up playing for another half an hour. What started off as a technical disaster turned into the highlight of the whole experience. Judging took some time, and unfortunately Junk Wars did not win one of the top three prizes. But apparently the game did place in the top five, so it was very close, especially considering there was over a thousand games. The game is live now on junkwars.net, so be sure to check it out. And also check out this video if you want to learn how to use AI to build games or apps just like this. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.